it's not Tiamat because it's never Tiamat. Now, don't get me wrong. Enuma Elish is an interesting piece of literature. It gives us a lot of political context. What it doesn't do is give a good view of the cosmology of Babylon. Put a different way, the Babylonian creation epic doesn't tell us as much as you might think about the concept of creation in Babylon. I get asked to identify a lot of Tiamat images. Before I even see the image, I know that it's not going to be Tiamat. Why? Because it's never Tiamat. I would love to see Tiamat's iconography. If she did have some iconography, then people would perhaps stop identifying everything that has a vaguely serpentine image as Tiamat. In the case of Anzu, the figure doesn't even have to be remotely serpentine. Images of Anzu versus Ninurta are remarkably easy to identify. Ninurta will have something identifying him as a storm god, Anzu will be part lion and part eagle, and the pair will obviously be fighting. And yet, which image is the most commonly identified as Tiamat? The one where a literal version of the myth where Ninurta fights Anzu is written. Another one that is commonly identified as depicting Tiamat also has an image of a storm god on it, and the figure isn't even fighting the serpentine figure. If anything, they look like they are friendly as one figure facing the serpent is in the greeting pose. What would a Tiamat image look like? That's hard to say. You would expect that the Enuma Elish would give us a lot of material to go on, but not really. Even in her main myth, we see a paper cutout of a character. You would expect Tiamat to show up in other myths, in offhand references, in place names, or literally any other place. While we don't have much on Tiamat, there's a difference between little and nothing. We do have a bit of linguistics. Tiamat is thought to mean bitter water, while Apsu is well established as being fresh water. In the myth, one would expect the goddess of fresh water, Nama, to be in the place of Apsu, but for some reason the myth went with a male deity here. Tiamat may refer to the salty sea or a large lake to the north where a lot of minerals would have made the water taste a bit bitter. So uh, what gives? Why all the nothing? There are a number of possible reasons why we might not see her. References might have been taboo, the dating of the myth might not have lined up so perhaps the myth comes really late and all the other references we have are too early, or perhaps she's simply not that important. Let's explore these. At first, it would make sense that there might be a taboo on having images of Tiamat. She is literally the manifestation of chaos in the myth. She is a villain, and so perhaps there's a problem with even mentioning her. Only, why is she only mentioned in Enuma Elish. Why don't we have at least her name mentioned offhand in the Proverbs or some of the Omen texts? Anzu shows up elsewhere. Asag shows up elsewhere. Lamashtu shows up all over the place. These are several adversarial figures. I wouldn't exactly call them evil, but they are all bad guys in the stories where they are mainly depicted. One-off villains were not something that we generally saw in Mesopotamian myth. Marduk is mentioned elsewhere, obviously, but he was the main deity of Babylon, and Babylon lasted for quite a while. We have images of Marduk. He doesn't have the most distinctive iconography, but Marduk images are not hard to find because of various context clues. In modern neo-paganism, there is a tendency to blame the patriarchy when this sort of thing happens. But none of the Mesopotamian civilizations were patriarchies. More rulers were male than female, but there was no ban on female rulers like we see elsewhere. Patriarchies are not common, actually, historically, and we certainly can't blame the patriarchy here because we see Lamashtu, a much more prominent bad guy, goddess, depicted in texts and image. 
There's no evidence that Tiamat was suppressed at all. She wasn't demonized from an earlier era because she wasn't mentioned in those earlier eras. Speaking of earlier eras, what do we mean by that? There's been a lot of research into when the myth comes from. And if you're interested in reading more about this, then you can read papers on the subject. Give Me Back My Idol by E. Odin Yingling has a good discussion on the topic. The gist of it is that the myth was commissioned to commemorate the return of the statue of Marduk during the reign of Agum Kakerin, a Kaysite king of Babylon. This dates it to the 1500s BCE. It could be many centuries newer because we can't date any fragments to the 1500s. The next most likely dating is the 1100s. But either way, it is old enough that we should be seeing more connections with the wider mythology. If Tiamat was drawn from older sources, we would expect to see at least a reference to these older sources. We don't. That's not to say that there aren't parallels with other texts. Anuma Elish borrowed from quite a few places. What I'm saying here is that we can't see where Tiamat herself comes from. There is no earlier Dingir or Udug of Bitter Waters, and the ancestries of the gods is different in those other sources. We also don't see other myths and texts borrowing Tiamat in the many centuries that follow. This brings us to the idea that the myth, or perhaps just Tiamat, simply wasn't nearly as important as she is made out to be. The myth certainly had some cosmology in there. It looks like it was inspired by the heroic battle between Ninurta and Anzu. At one time, it was a patriotic text in Babylon, and there's a contemporary text from Assyria that has their version of the story. Ultimately, though, it was very political in nature. Marduk likely fought Tiamat because he needed to be depicted as defeating someone, and so Tiamat was written in. There isn't much about Tiamat in her own central myth because the authors didn't have established mythology and imagery to draw off of. Now, we could find a new tablet or a dozen new tablets tomorrow that change everything. That's tomorrow's problem, though. For today, we don't have anything like that. So many times, I have heard things like Anuma Elish is the oldest known creation story. That statement is right up there with the Epic of Gilgamesh has the oldest example of the flood story. And by that I mean that this is not correct and that the articles who say that sort of thing should feel bad for not bothering to do basic Google searches. We have a lot of creation stories. The Theogony of Dunu might be quite a lot earlier, but the version that we have comes from the 700s BCE. This one doesn't predate Anuma Elish to my knowledge. Atra Hasis comes from about 1700 BCE, so between two and six centuries earlier than Enuma Elish. The copy of the Iridu Genesis that we have comes from about 1600, but is generally accepted as being from a lot earlier, with estimates putting it between 2300 and 2000 BCE due to elements contained in the story lining up with known older works. Even if we take the 1600 date, it is still older than Enuma Elish. Prelude to Gilgamesh is certainly older than the oldest fragments we have, but those fragments come from between 2100 and 2700 BCE. The myths of Enki and Ninma Anki and Ninhursag, and Anki and the World Order are difficult to date, but they could, in fact, be the oldest of the lot. These various creation texts, as well as a lot of minor ones, tell of An, Ki, Apsu, and of Enlil and Anki. Many mention other figures that show up in the wider mythology. None of them, before or after Anuma Elish, mention Tiamat. This brings us to modern Tiamat image. It's not Tiamat, because it's never Tiamat. 
until it is. The ancient iconography of this or that god or spirit or demon doesn't matter to modern images. If you draw a picture of a Vietnamese dragon and call it Tiamat, then it's Tiamat. If you draw a picture of a car and say it's Tiamat, then that's Tiamat. It's exactly the same for images of Inanna, which are clearly inspired by the Bernie relief, even though the Bernie relief hasn't really been identified. I have a follow-up video on that, by the way. I ran across some really convincing iconography from known locations and from re reputable sources. Back to Tiamat, though. Your modern image and interpretation is your own, and it is personal to you. But at the same time, you cannot say that your interpretation should be taken as universal. If it is your intention to depict Tiamat, then Tiamat is what you have depicted, whether or not it lines up with ancient iconography. So for the modern practitioner, if you really would like an image of Tiamat, I would highly recommend that you create one yourself. I hope you guys found that interesting, and if you have suggestions or thoughts about pieces of art you would like me to discuss, or if you guys have a topic that you would like me to give you more information about, uh, please mention it in the comment section below. Anyway, looking forward to reading it. Catch you later. Bye-bye.